I really like these tanks. Turned out exactly how I designed it under a six pack. Lovingly stare at it. That's about all I do. Boost out, man. Yeah, I like this. We're here today at Arcee's Aquarium here in Burley Heads. This place is absolutely amazing. I've just walked through it. It's seriously good. We're going to go through, look at all the tanks. Ross is going to tell us about all the fish and there's tons of little breeding tips in this video. If all goes well, hopefully Ross is going to take us back to his breeding room at some point in the future and can Ross teach us about some breeding. <laughs> yeah, but we'll let Ross take us through the room and show us all the fish and all that stuff. And the shrimp, there's tons of shrimp here. So You're welcome. All right, let's go. This is Ross, the owner. I'm Ross and I manage RC Aquariums. How long have you owned the shop for? Uh, five years, October 2017. So started in 2017. What did you do before that? I was a glazier for 20 years. So from the age of 15 to 35, I worked fixing windows and shop fronts. You get lots of cuts in your hands? And... Nah, never had a stitch. 20 right. years without a stitch. <laughs> Real careful guy then. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Front counter, beer, customary. So this is the checkout of the whole entire store? Yep, yeah, that was built last year. Looks horrible at the moment because we ran out of CO2. I didn't realise. You reckon that looks horrible? A couple of months ago that looked really good. I reckon it still looks pretty amazing, man. So you got, is this Pogo's? The Gosterman Health Ferry. Yep, and you've got tons of little booster philandras. And... Cephalandra, there's a bit of pink flamingo crypt in there. More boost. More boost. And boost out, man. Yeah, I like boost. I don't have to trim it much. We've also got a little boost of flounder flowering down here. It's insane. So how big is this tank? Uh, four foot. And that's the checkout. So when you're checking out, you can actually see people through the back. You've just frosted that glass. Yes. That's so you can't see my fine legs. <laughs> when did you start keeping fish? Keeping fish? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Three, four, five. Since you were three? Yeah, I always collected fish, kept fish. I lived in, near a creek. <laughs> I just lived near a creek, man. Yeah, you, know, you go down and you want to feed a yabbies, so you'd stick your arm down the holes and you pull them out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You get more big yabbies that way than little ones. 100%. Just pick the big holes. We sprouted that in a plant tank. No way. Why? But just from an avocado seed. Yes. <laughs> and how, how old is it, like a year now? <laughs> no, three. Three years. Yeah, That's you three. Can, you, you can buy an avocado right now. <laughs> what, to buy it in three years yes. more? Yes, that's right, you pre-order. So, you've got another tank here, there's a cube tank. Ah, yes, water box. Yep. 2420. And what do we have here? Mini Java fern, really, and Rosen Maiden Crips. So the Rosen Maidens actually stayed down the bottom. Yeah, I put two of them in. And they've turned into that. They yeah, are. Gee, man. There have been nearly a pest around here at the moment. Is it flowering too? Or yes, is yeah, that that's, a, that's an old flower. What's this, a boost flowering here? Yeah, so, there's a boost that always flowering. Do you have CO2 in all these tanks? Most tanks I'll run CO2 in. If I want to grow plants, I'll run CO2. And that's what makes it flower? Um, no, flowers anyway. Happy plants will still flower. I keep my water temperature low, around about that 22 degrees on everything. And that's it. Drinks fridge, that's where I keep my lunch. Oh no, you actually do. Don't come here buying drinks because we usually ain't got any. Get a bit of that, look at okay. those. So what are these? Those CW28s, Super Swartzy Hyphens, and Barbados Corys. Have you bred either of these? No, no, my worker has. Oh. So you have fry them somewhere? Yes. <laughs> and how big is this tank? Four foot, touch under three foot wide, and it's just over a foot deep. It used to be a coral tank once. And you make all of these tanks? Yes. So every single tank in here, if we look at it, you've built it? Except for the water box. Water box tanks, I didn't. And then you've got some Bosmani rainbows. Bosmanis, yes. So apparently you breed those. Oh, a few. <laughs> Not that many. You should hook us up. Oh, I don't have any for sale, dude. You're going to wait eight months <laughs> until they're ready. <laughs> and you've got some immersed growing boosts up here. Yeah, that's just off cuts. I've sort of thrown up around there and just let, off it, cuts. let it go, really. And in about five years, this shop should look about how I want it. Yeah. And what, we got some pothos up here. Pothos, thanks to my worker. And oh. this one here, thanks to you. That's a cool plant. That'll grow in really well. I'm gonna run it all along the top here. Oh, I'm gonna run cables right through the top here and grow a roof of it, essentially. And then here, what's this one? Just a, a weed out of my old garden. There was a bit of moss, but 
the weed sort of done better. <laughs> I don't care that it's a weed. Most aquarium plants are. So what made you start this? Labour of love. I bred a lot of discus at the time, probably about 3,000 a month. And I needed an outlet to get rid of them. I could do 1,000 discus out of a pair a month. That's insane. And now yeah. I don't have any discus. It's all right. planted tanks, all aquariums with plants. Why did you stop discus? Cost, maintenance. The world's moving into nano tanks. 100%. My power bill in this shop has gone from three to 4,000 a quarter to 1,200 a quarter. Because you're not like getting rid of discus. Yeah. A lot of the fish in the shop, you do breed yourself too? Nah, not all. Not all. I try to focus on the things I'm good at and I try not to overextend myself. Yeah, I feel like I fall into that pit a little if bit. If you do too many at once, something else ne gets neglected. This is our water box. This one probably gets the most hits out of every tank in our shop. That is seriously beautiful, man. It's, so, a, it's been in a few forms, that tank. There's mini java fern, quite a selection of bicephalandra. That's bulbitis. Yep. Ponagetan bul bovinianus. Trident java fern. And... I love that, that's so beautiful. There's a little bit of... Gosh, I can't remember the name of that right now. I've probably too many beers down right now. That's seriously special, that one, though. Someone in the comments will know, for sure. Yeah, yeah. hey. I know, but I'm just not going to pull it out of my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a new one, is it? No, it's not new. This is probably my oldest display, isn't it? Every time that carpet takes over, I rip it up, sell it, plant it again, grows. I pull all of those pink flamingo crypts out and sell them, grow it again. This tank's been done over about four times. It's been pillaged and sold and plundered. It's my pirate tank. Yeah, this one up here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. You don't see that very much. How much would a plant like that cost? Oh man, a lot. How long does Bruce of Philandra take to grow? Uh, under good conditions. That there, what, for instance, has probably been in there, what, eight months? And that's eight months of growth. Yeah, and that's probably tripled in size in eight months. To be honest, it grows so slow that I don't, I try not to look at it. If you had to give someone some advice, on how to grow boost. Keep your hardness up and your temperature down. Okay, so yeah. a cold, a hard GH of GH of six at least and and cooler water. And so 22 degrees is pretty much where I run everything in this shop. Less algae, better plant growth. Power bills a bit better. Yeah, yeah, I can and definitely less relate. cords, like look how, I don't have cords everywhere. I wanna move over to this one because you have some seriously big CPDs in here. That's an old breeding colony. They're getting pretty long in the tooth. I'm sure they'd probably try squeeze out an egg if you pushed them hard enough, but. And then you got more boosts? More boosts. I have boosts in every tank, waste plant. What makes that so expensive? Harder to get. This is a tank we build in store. So we sell these. So are these just cube tanks that you make? Yeah, 299 with the mat and filter in the back. They walk out the door. Perfect. And then up here, I was saying there's nothing in this tank, but apparently there's something in there's here. Really that one there's Purino Buddhist Microps. They're an Australian native. I'm going to give it a go at breeding them. What are they? Are they a cod or something? Uh, you think of your Buddhist Buddhist, you know, Buddhist Buddhist, Mike, the like, yeah. crazy fish? Yeah. They like those, but they've got a squat mouth and big pectoral fins. You growing. don't see them often. I've no, tried I've for about it. five years to get them. And this tank here, everyone looks at it and thinks it's a display, but it's not. It's just, I keep fish in it for myself. and. When they get bigger, I'll chuck a bit of salt in there and hope to breed them. Yeah, so you're just growing it out, basically. Yeah, this is my fish room. Yeah, I know, yeah, it's like it's, a fish room slash fish shop. You know, people ask to buy stuff and it's hard, it's hard to part with some stuff and some stuff I just won't. I definitely feel that, like when I'm trying to, you know, when I'm breeding stuff, it's really hard to let go of it because they're your babies. And this is your tank you sell your plants out of? Yeah, some plants. Anything that grows on something, so yeah, you got all you know, your Anubius, Java ferns, Persephalandra ferns, what, light bulbitis. What is this, this cake that you've made? Is I make those in like an ice cube tray out of volcanic rock, sea chem matrix that's crushed up. It the, has it held together? Epoxy. Oh, right. So you make a little epoxy bricks. Yeah, it's just, a, yeah, just epoxy bricks. So, um, Grab one out. You see the roots grow through it. That's awesome. So nothing in here is rocket science. It's just trial and error. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we try something else. <laughs> Perfect, <bro. laughs> 
Welcome to Keeping Aquariums. What do you mainly focus on doing here? Shrimp, secret A's, emeralds, neon green resboras, macrostoma betters. I noticed you had a massive tank of the macrostomas. You bred those, right? Yeah, it took three pairs to get one that would do the thing I wanted to. So that was an expensive endeavor, but it worked. So these are the macrostoma fry that you have. Yeah. So how did you end up breeding these? Because I know that literally every single breeder I've talked to has had so much trouble trying to breed these. Fish swallow the eggs or... Buy lots of pairs so and hope that they don't eat the eggs. That's it. That's literally That's it. That's it. No changing pH, nothing. Just tap water, our Gold Coast tap water. I didn't do nothing. It's just buying lots of pairs. They're so beautiful, man. So you went through six fish at 500 bucks each easily, right? Yeah. <laughs> And but it was um, worth it. Look no, at 100%, it. man. This is the coolest thing. I saw it and I was like, is that what I think it is? Are these for sale yet or you still want to um, a little bit? I have pre-sold a couple. There's a few that I want to keep for myself. Yep. What's must a breeder be. that's not keeping the best for themselves? Like, Sorry, guys. I do the same thing. So, yeah. <laughs> but That's why I don't let you out the back. The other thing, too, about these fish, I'm, I don't want to get too stuck up on them, but like, they're literally hard to get everywhere. It's not just Australia. Literally all over the world, they're hard to get. Why do you think that is? Limited collection. You're not allowed to collect them out of Brunei. Are they endangered or? Yeah, they're on a protected okay. protected list over there. Do you reckon that discus made you better at breeding all the other fish? Yes, by not following Google. <laughs> by not following Google? Yeah. Everything about discus on Google is horrible information. Google tells you to breed, to do a water change to make them breed. That initiates the, that just replicates the first rainfall from the wet season. But it doesn't flood on that first rainfall. Most of it soaks into the ground. So the discus breed, they hope to hatch their babies and grow them up before the water is rushing so fast past them that they can't look after them. So that's how discus breed. Yeah, right, okay. So if, if you do another water change while they got eggs, they'll eat the eggs every time because it's protein. Just check out what happens in the wild. Discus don't breed when it rains a lot. So I found they breed when the water's at the most filthiest and you'll get the best hatch rate because the pH is the lowest. They grow when the, you've got clean water. Mm -hmm. So you breed when the water's dirty and you grow while the water's good. So that's the same with pretty much every fish from the Amazon. What's the motivation by the shrimp rack down there that he's got? Like what drove him to do that? Because that's probably one of the most impressive sort of shrimp tanks and selection of shrimp I've seen in a long while. It's cool as f plain and simple. Uh, no one else has got one. Turned out exactly how I designed it under a six pack. I was coming to this brand new room. It's hardly brand new. I've been building it for a long time. So how long has this taken you? A touch over a year. How many tanks are there and how did you build the stands? And uh, There's 44 in there. The stands are just pieced together in my head pretty much. I've done a bit of a mud map and place it together. There's 252 pieces of timber to make that stand. And there's about 580 pieces of glass to build the tanks. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. So the way you've designed them, I really, really like this. So you've got your substrate up the back. Yep. Piece of glass here to break off the substrate and then a feeding area. Yeah, feeding area. And if I drop food in there, obviously the shrimp come out and everyone loves to see shrimp. So the main purpose of this is so you see the shrimp? Yeah, it's a bit wanky. Really? I people, think it's wanky. People love that stuff. I've seen your channel. <laughs> people, I mean, people love, seriously, like, yeah, why wouldn't I know, you? I know. It is cool. So what type of shrimp do you have in here right now? Really? Because this is so brand new? Not a lot. I do have Blue Dreams. Baby orange sunkiss because I sold all the adults. Oh my gosh, these are beautiful. Yellow cherries up the top here. So these are sunkists. Oh, where are they? oh, you're they're the tiny. Babies. They're yeah. tiny, man. Seriously, they are tiny. Yeah. Don't come in wanting those this week. The yellows, these come out of my display tank out the front. It's my main colony for those. So you breed these all as well? Yeah, some. Do you have any advice for breeding these? Just consistency, you know, keeping it consistent. It's not a lot to it really. Keeping the temperature low helps a lot. So and we do have a lot of information on our website that sort of people feed from. The QR codes on here, that links straight to our website. So customers scan that, gives them information about the shrimp that they're buying. Sometimes we put a $20 voucher in there on a weekend and people go, yeah. 
Hell yeah. Do you breed these as well, the crystals? Uh, they breed in the tanks. So are these just all on Gold Coast tap water? No, no, I do use RO water, remineralize it. I use Contenum GH Plus. It's local, it's cheap, and I've always used stuff from Kent Marine. These are so cool, bro. They're Missouri Blue Bolts. Oh, I haven't seen these in person in a really long time, especially not this good quality. They're beautiful. You breed these? Yeah, I breed some. So I moved some up to here, up to this tank. So I sell out of this tank at the moment. And these ones here are for the next breeding lot. So I will sell out of this one when this one gets low. So you like selectively pick this one here that we're looking at right now? Yeah, yeah, I pulled that one out of this group down here, moved it up. Michelings are underrated. Yeah, you get the good stuff from Michelings. It's just cool, yeah. Oh, what are these babies down here? I got a pair of uni maculata betters upstairs. They had a spawn and I just chucked them in there because I had nowhere else to chuck them at the point. That's where they ended up. Wild betters are another thing that we breed quite a bit of in store. Ross, what's the fern? I just remembered the name we were, we were at that earlier. It's Crepitomanes auriculatum. That's my mother plant that I take baby ferns from and grow more. You don't do anything special to grow those? Just look at it. Just look at it? That's it. Lovingly stare at it. That's about all I do. What about the difference between the two, the two strips? Caradina like soft water, so no KH. They like a GH of around five to six. They use a buffering soil, ADA. Neo Caradina, they like the higher pH, high hardness, high temperature. That's why all my Neos are from there back. All my Caradinas through here. And you just can have a guess what will go into that. Shelly's? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? Sulawesi shrimp. I shrimp. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. So we've got four tanks reserved for Sulawesi shrimp down there. I've got so not something you see often no, around no. the place. So. Are they locally bred or are they coming in? No, locally. You can't import shrimp. You can't import any shrimp? No. You can't even import these? No. I didn't know that. No, no, you're not allowed to import shrimp. Oh, wow. So all these are all these are off local breeders or bred in here. You also got your substrates over here? Substrates, yeah, loose substrates. We do a lot of aquascaping. It's like a candy Yeah, rack. it's a lot cheaper to buy, you know, the bit you need than the whole bag. Yeah, right. definitely. We have a lot of people bring in their tank and they'll just plunk their tank down there and add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and we just weigh it up as they go. We got doggy down here. Jack Jack, that's Samuel Black son. Yeah. Jack for short. Jack Jack, say hi. <laughs> Rocks, don't have a lot in it at the moment. Come in back next week and film again, we might. You've also but... got Shrimp King stuff here. Yeah, yeah, well, Shrimp King is another brand I like to use, but it's a good brand, but you stick to what you know, don't you? Yeah, 100%. Everyone finds what they know works in their fish room. All right, well, we'll move out. You've got an upstairs area, which is fantastic that I, I want do. to show everyone. When you were designing the shop, how did you want it to look? Different. Different to any other shop. So on the Wild way betters. Up, you've got, oh my gosh, they're expensive. So what are these? So Naratus betters, wild betters. And you breed these? Nah, my worker does. But she does a good job of it. That's why I keep her around. Pea puffers because that's what we call them, really. I didn't notice that. Most people don't. By the way, like, everyone overseas is like, like <laughs> complaining about the price. 150 each here, and they're like four bucks in the States. Yeah. And here you got... Betters. Would like to stock a lot more betters at the moment, but this is it for now. They're still beautiful, like, look at this one. Yeah, yeah, there's some nice betters in there. There hasn't been great ones around, but there's still some really nice betters in there. I really like these tanks. So you built all these? Yes. Most tanks in here are built by me. All the stands. That's incredible. I've awesome. only got two rules. If you build something, it's got to be something that no one else has got and something that people aren't going to replicate. No, I definitely think you've achieved it for sure. Like everything here looks fantastic and you've I just didn't set up want that. it to be another yellow box stall. So you got what type of rainbows are these? Those are checkered rainbows. But they look like crap because of the white bottom. Lesson learnt. We used to have them on a black bottom, like in your shop. I looked at your shop where you got the black bottoms. Yeah, it and works. The fish go dark. It works for some stuff. Like, I mean, look how good your barbs and stuff look. Yeah. They look amazing and they stand out. Yeah. They, like, you know, you go a white bottom, you go a white bottom, the fish go light. You go a black bottom, they go dark. It's your the discus best. breeder coming out with the white bottom. I know, and lesson learned, trial and error. I still think it looks beautiful. You got guppies down here. Yep, guppies, endlers. Sorry about my lighting, it's pretty crappy. No, it's fine. It's much, much nice. 
Yeah. This is a fairly recent thing, all these plants in the pots. Yep. How do you do that? We do them here in store. It just means that the plants are stable where we don't have to move them around in stock tanks. Can you sell them in the pot? Yep. With all that? Yep. Some plants do really well at it, others are slow. What's growing up on the matten filter? Mini Java fern. In time, that'll cover every tank in here. So mini Java fern is completely sub species to normal Java fern? Yes. It's yeah. not just like a pup, it stays small. Yeah, no, it stays small. We let it grow on the backs of our tanks and it takes up nutrient, looks good. 100%. Oh, these are fantastic. What are these? Those Thread there, fins. Threadfin Rainbows. If I didn't know you had them, I just ordered some. I can hook you up. Do you breed these? Hell no. I breed way too much other stuff. Okay. But they are a cool fish. And Do you, you don't see them very often at Have all. you bred them before? No. Pygmy Corys. I buy them off a local breeder. They're small. They are really small. And I've got some of the bigger ones from the last lot that he bought in. They Hopefully he sees this, brings them in bigger. Julie Eyes or Julie Trial Eyes. Any Artists, whatever they are. That's right. You can't get the Julie Eye everyone wants. Napoensis. Oh, yeah, tetras. these are cool. They remind me of big dwarf quarries. The Napanesis or Napoensis? Napoensis. Or... Oh. I reckon people should start calling them galaxy quarries. You'd yeah. sell a mountain more of them. When they're on the black substrate, like I got them in my tanks, they look so good. Yeah. They look so good. They are very cool quarry. I've been breeding these. If okay. you need some. Yeah, they're, they're fry as CPD size. Yeah? They lay eggs that are tiny. So it, oh, well, they'll be easy to raise. Yeah, super easy. <laughs> no. Really? Oh, they're okay. I just chuck them in. I squeeze out a sponge filter or something to feed them. Yeah. Just keep a lot of moss outside and just shake it into the tank. Done. That's another hack that you use. Hair algae. You got a lot of hair algae growing in a pond? Pull it out, shake it into a tank. Done. What? Because it's got an empty soy and stuff in it? Yeah. Cool. So coming down here. Those congos are good. I wish people would buy more of them. They look, they look great now. They were small when they came in, but they're glowing now. Yeah, they're cool, dude. I do have to mount my lights up higher. Get a bit. You should do the floodlights. <laughs> 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 no. Nah, I'd like to change them all over to Chihiros, personally. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if Chihiros is watching, they can sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Send us some stuff. Yeah, send Nick some too. Oh, it's all right. I already got floodlights. <laughs> all right, so this part, yep. I love. I love this side of your room. Do you want to walk us through? Because you got some really cool This quarries. is the newest part up here. Okay. So this is... Most of my locals would know that this was being built over the last God knows how long, long time. Blue spot quarries, Melanistius, yep. the F1, bred how, locally. How the heck do you find this stuff? Do they just come in and go, hey, you want fish? No, you just have good relationships. You'll, you'll get them. You just have good relationships with people that like to breed stuff. Those come in today. Double reds? Super Triple red. reds, but they're, oh, I reckon there's a lot of sleeper males. That does look like a girl though. I reckon they're all good. And there's one boy down there, that one might be. I'm interested to see. That's the problem with a pistos. You need a tank that you can split out the main. So when you're breeding a pistos, how do you make them look good? You keep removing your dominant. You just remove the dominant ones out? So that's why I don't have many pistos in here at the moment, because I will build another whole system for that. Okay. And then I'll buy in groups and then remove dominant pairs out and just keep doing that. Like, with your Panduros and stuff, do you have any advice for in those? No, I don't really have much advice for those yep. at all. I'm not an Apisto breeder. I, but like I said, I, don't, I try not to go too far out of my comfort zone. really do respect that because, like, the problem is I might be just too new to it, but, like, every time I see something that's too tempting, I'm into it. Like I see aquarium hobby. Yeah, so then yeah. I'm trying to breed it, and then it distracts me from other stuff. That's how people end up with 68 tanks. Yeah. <laughs> Those are Amatis quarries. So wild Amatis, they only come in this week. And there's some similar smudge spots in yeah, there as well. Nice. They look really good on a white substrate, but they don't look that good in my shop. This here is the best sand. What's this? Oh, it just sinks straight away. This sand was put in there three weeks ago. And it'll go back to clear as. Are these ABs, Akaras? No, they're not. Sorry, AB. Locally bred. Olivers, they're yeah. locally. Locally bred. Oh, wow. Are they're these probably locally the bred? Way. Yeah. <laughs> same breeder. <laughs> no way. Same breeder. So, so same breeder, same breeder, same breeder. Surely um, they bred the similars. No, no. No, they were wholesale bought. Oh, okay. I've got similars if you need. 
You can hook us up. Yeah, I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up. Lox of Zonus, they're sold. Sorry. They're yeah, cool though. Dox, how do you say it? Lox of Zonus. Lox of Zonus. That's how I say it. I'm not Latin at all. Can't you tell by the accent? Yeah, man. No, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> black Venezuelans? Yeah. They don't come much blacker than that. Yeah, on a white substrate. Yeah. Albino Sturbis? Yeah, Albino Sturbis. Not my cup of tea, but like some people like them. Okay. As opposed to the normal Sturbis next door. Yeah, at least they got a bit of yellow on them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like somewhat of colour. They're cool. They're cool enough. Orange Venezuelans, they're all right. They look a bit like a bronze though. They come in yesterday. Hopefully they get a bit more colour. Face. Red horse faces, locally bred again. And a big Brocus. Yeah. Yeah, big Brocus. There's some eggs up on the side there from the stir guys. They breed nearly every day. Yeah. Rummies, this is what happens when you don't buy them on special. Yeah, they look beautiful. If you don't buy fish on special, you get nice fish. Yeah. To get quality fish in the shop, I never buy on special. I will never buy fish from a wholesaler on special. And if I think about it, I slap myself. And then a Chopre Danio. We don't know where he come from. He just came in there when we set up the tank a few days later. And there were pea puffers in here I saw before. Uh, yeah, all boys. And there is also some 397s, L397s, if you can find them. Ah, the babies downstairs in the shrimp room come from these two. So they're mum and dad. Yeah. They're awesome. They're huge. Like, if you put my hand yeah. all right, out, they're big fish. That's Unimaculata Bahidon. Now that's a Unimaculata Ho-Wong. There's a few babies still left in there. Yeah. I should have just left them all in there. Look how much they've grown yeah, they're, in here. They're big as compared to the other ones. Yeah. These guys just thrive on neglect. We water change once a week and see it. everything in here gets 90% water changes once a week. And That much? Yeah, every tank. Wow. Every tank in this shop. Except for the shrimp tanks. Yep. Do that, you'll kill your shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do on your shrimp? 20. Okay. Uh, emerald reservoirs, a few bandit quarries. So you breed the emeralds? Yeah. yeah. So how do you do that? Uh, same as everyone else, collect the eggs, wait for them to grow. So it is labour intensive doing that? Yeah. And, they and like some days you get good eggs, some days you don't. So when you collect the eggs out, what do you put them in? I just chuck them straight in another tank and let them hatch. How many days worth of eggs would you put in? Uh, a couple of weeks. Oh, you'll put a couple of weeks worth of eggs in the same tank? Yeah. Yeah, until if the babies start getting to a size where they're going to eat the eggs, I don't put more in. Oh, I never thought of just doing it that way, you know what I mean? I've I don't really to... think much of it. I yeah. Don't, I don't put much thought into it. The Separate egg scatterers it. in the wild, you dump eggs somewhere, they're going to hatch. They work on numbers. Do they <laughs> do well in your soft water? Yeah, I mean, they should be on soft water. Mine, Mars, soft water. They should be cool water. Because mine went a bit funny in, in my water. But I wasn't too sure why. How hot? Oh, it's 23 degrees. Yeah, Might it's not too bad. That's cooler. Good. Yeah, cooler would be good, but that's not too bad. So, CPDs here. These are basically the exact same. They will breed together, so you never keep them in the same tank. Really? Yeah, they will breed together. You get ugly looking fry, so don't do it. There's two tanks of CPDs. We'll come down here. And you've got some betters. They're yeah, more Maratus juveniles. Oh, look, they're sexable at that size, but. And what are these ones here? Uh, Unimaculata, Unimaculata. Oh gosh, another type, another type of Unimaculata better. We get, we have a pea that sort of keeps producing, so. I love their little double, you know, like they looks like they've got a pig snout. Yeah. They're cool. Yeah, the boys hold their mouth, they're mouth brooding better. So they evolve for faster flowing water. Another one here. Horrible jumpers, they're the hardest fish to keep in a tank. They just jump out. Yeah. You got more betters down here, just your commons? More betters, yeah, commons. They're pretty average this week, but. It's fine, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, that. it's eye in the beholder, isn't it? Yeah, there's you some know. really cool ones here, man. There's fish that I look at and I go, this really average, and people froth over them. Lemon blue eyes, red line endler guppies. Do you breed these? No, no, locally sourced. All of those fish are locally sourced. You don't bother with bristle nose or anything? Oh, I do have bristle nose around the shop. Oh, you don't breed them though, or? No, no, no. Agassizy Corys. They're cool, I love them. They, are, they cool. are very cool. We do quite a lot of Corys in here. I really like it, it's all nano tanks. Like yeah. a lot, really, kinda. Yeah, nano tanks, planted tanks. What is this? This, I don't know, this is something that I pretty much dreamt up one night and decided to build it. It's our plant sales tank. All our Anubius goes up the top. 
Crips, sort of on the second shelf. It's changed forms about six times since we've built it. It's incredible. So why do you put the Anubis immersed? Because it's easier. It just takes up less room and it converts well. So if you're going to put it submerged, that, that'll go straight under easy. It's all sitting in foam. Oh no. Oh wow. And it grows well. Yeah, man. So as you can see, this has been in here a week. Just already rooted in there. Can you uh, grow Boosomers? I've not been very good at it. I find it so much easier to grow underwater. But a lot of people do grow it immersed and we will do another big four foot by seven foot tall yep. display to grow it immersed if I ever learn how to do it. And it will spin, man. It's going to spin. It'll look oh, cool. Really? Yeah. Take, I'll come back and have a look at it. You better. Plants. We don't buy plants very much locally anymore, mainly because everyone else has got the same plants. You'd find the same thing. So yeah. I buy plants from as far away as I can get them. I do like the immerse. What's this in the corner? Uh, Hygrophila pinnatifida. Oh, wow. I usually harvest off pieces like that. So I grow it in here and I just harvest off it to grow plants submersed. Yep. So I then sell it. It's seriously like a, a hobby. Here is a hobby. Yeah. This is just a hobby. <laughs> Africans, Africans is not my forte. There are some really cool ones in here. Yeah, you know, Adrian sort of coaching me through Africans a bit. You know, I like the idea of doing shell dwellers and then guppies on top. Yeah. You know, I want to turn this more into just breeding colonies of that. Shellies. Multi fasciatus. I see, I'm the same. I got no clue. Oh, I find Africans so hard. They look really similar. <laughs> yeah, and they all want to fight and bicker and carry on. I'll leave that to Katie. The baby electric yellows are cute. That's yeah, they were bred in here. It's a mouth breeders, aren't they? Yeah. I yeah, so uh, sometimes when they get a mouthful of eggs in here, they start thinning out. So we milk them of the eggs so that they can eat. Can eat. Yeah, exactly. Rashadis. Rashadi. Thanks, AB. They're yeah, cool. Transcriptors. Yeah. I do like Rockies, the rock dwellers. We started keeping plants in the African things. They, they do reasonably well. More just assorted. Yeah, once these are sold, look, I'll probably do a deal on this soon and you're just going to have them yeah. cheaper. Then I'll put something else in there that I like. Definitely. Sorry, guys. No, it's, it's how it works. <laughs> There's some really cool stuff here. We've got, you know, cherry barbs. Cherry barbs, adult cherries. But I really wanted to highlight this. So what are these, these rainbows? Uh, to be honest, don't know. I think they're prey cocks. But nah, look, really? Well, the other ones are labelled in your other tank as Praycox. These are Praycox over here, but I know there's a couple of Bosmanis in there because I got them off a local breeder and he had them mixed. Okay. So I just sort of let them grow up and as they, you know, that's a Praycox. I could, you know, that's a Bosmani. I could separate them out from there. Look how different they look on a white substrate though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like you couldn't even tell what they are if you didn't know. No. No, those were, would have been assorted that we would have chucked over there just, yeah. just to get them out of our way. Oh yeah, now you can kind of see it. Yeah, they're like three different types there. Yeah. And you got Kohaku sword tails. Kohaku's, yeah. I don't do a lot of live bearers. I probably should do a lot more. I love these Pacific I know, all boys. Damn. All boys. They're so good. They're made in my image, I swear. Garamis? I don't do a lot of Garamis. No. They're locally bred, I bought them. I won't buy imported Garamis. Yeah. I just won't do it. Just Antlers, I do a lot of Antlers. We trade and sell a lot of Antlers. Angels, I swap CO2 bottle for, for angels so that I get good angels. What about the um, little contraption you've got in there to hold the zucchini? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Peter, my worker. She does that. What is it? Just I a... couldn't do this shop without her. So, what is it? Like, is it made by? It's made by Ocean Nutrition. Yeah, yeah. I forget to feed the fish. There's a lot of days I forget to feed the fish, and without Peter here, these fish would <laughs> get yeah. skipped a lot of days. Asian glass flying hatchets. Yeah, Look, they're cool. They're one of those things that sounded good when I ordered them. They're cool. They'd be cool in someone else's tank. And then so come neons. Get them. You've got to trust your suppliers. They were bought as green neons. They're not. No. Yeah. You know, there's a mixed. bit of a messy tank up here that are filled with everything. There's a wild better pear in there and lemon tetras. And I like the lemons. We just let that tank go. Cool, man. Well, that's about it. Well, thank you so much for having us here, Ross. Thanks, Nick. Thanks really for coming. I really appreciate you letting us in. I know how it is when you know someone wants to come and shove a camera in your face. So yeah, it's not I do my cup of tea. It. No, that's fine. But yeah, thank you, and uh, thanks everyone for watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey. Yep. Cheers.